right, Attorney General Barr's letter to Congress gives us a little bit more insight into the Mueller investigation. So now let's bring in Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz to help us break it down. Professor, great to have you with us today. Well, thank you. I'm probably going to be the only person on your show who is going to be very critical of Mueller. I thought it was a cop-out mm -hmm. for him to say that there was not enough evidence to indict, but it's not an exoneration. On, on obstruction. And we're going to put a report out on obstruction. We're going to put a report out which says on the one hand, on the other hand, it sounds like a law school exam. That's not the job of the prosecutor. The job of the prosecutor is to decide yes or no. Make a decision. And then if you say yes, you indict. If you say no, you shut up. You don't go on and say, no, we're not going to indict, but let me tell you all the evidence that might have led us to indict. That's exactly what prosecutors shouldn't do. That's exactly what Comey did. How is this different than Comey? Comey says, I'm not going to indict Hillary Clinton, but let me tell you, it was a close case. She had all of this stuff, and she was extremely careless, and she did terrible things, but we're not going to indict her. That's not what prosecutors do. So I challenge defenders of Comey, to, I'm sorry, defenders of Mueller, mm -hmm. to distinguish what Mueller did in relation to obstruction of justice to what Comey did in relation to uh, her uh, email and why she wasn't indicted on that. I don't see a big difference. Yeah, it's interesting because we knew as soon as we saw this in the in the letter where the special counsel said, I'm not exonerating, I'm not also convicting the or, or indicting the president or suggesting he committed a crime on this issue of obstruction of justice. So then he left it to the attorney general who then with the legal team and with Rod Rosenstein and with others came to the conclusion that they did not see a factual basis for finding the president had obstruct justice. Interesting that Barr said it wasn't completely premised upon the point that they didn't find an under lining crime of any kind of collusion or any kind of trouble with Russia, right. but that did bear on the decision. He also said it wasn't about the constitutional question of whether or not you can right. indict a sitting president, right. but he said, we looked at it um, and we thought that it was uh, not worth pursuing. Now, Congressman Jerry Nadler, the chair of the House Judiciary, has tweeted quite a bit about this, and of course we knew that would be the point Democrats would jump to. He says, Special Counsel Mueller worked for 22 months to determine the extent to which President Trump obstructed justice. Attorney General Barr took two days to tell the American people that while the president's not exonerated, there will be no action by DOJ. I would argue the letter goes farther mm -hmm. than that because it says we didn't find that he actually committed acts that were obstruction of justice. What do you make now of this back and forth that we're going to have over that point? Well, that's exactly what happened with Hillary Clinton. When Comey said not enough evidence to indict, but she was careless, every Republican seized on that. What Nadler said is exactly why the Mueller report shouldn't have said what it said. It should have made its decision. Maybe it should send the confidential letter to the attorney general saying, look, it was a close case. We had people arguing one way, people arguing the other way. But you don't make that public. That's not what prosecutors do. Let's remember also, prosecutorial reports are inherently one-sided. They don't hear the defense case. They don't cross-examine witnesses. There's no opportunity to hear both sides of the story. So we shouldn't take all that seriously any conclusion that is negative about anybody that doesn't result in an indictment. If there's an indictment, at least you have a chance to challenge it and fight back in court. But if they say, oh, you were a bad boy, you almost obstructed justice, how do you fight against that? Mm -hmm. Where do you defend yourself against that kind of charge? That's why traditionally prosecutors are not allowed to say anything about people they decided not to indict. But Mueller just mm -hmm. couldn't resist. He's been working all these months, spent all this money, so he has to tell the American public, look, I had some people who wanted to indict, some people who didn't want to indict. Here's this argument, here's that argument. I'm leaving it to the attorney general. Democrats will take one thing out of it. Republicans will take right. another thing out of it. That's precisely what prosecutors should not do. Shame on Mueller for not having the guts to come to a decision one way or the other. That's what prosecutors are paid to do. Okay, so obviously he as special counsel was operating under a different statutory framework than Kenneth Starr, who was then working as the independent counsel. Mm -hmm. Now, he today was asked about this issue. As you, uh, you know, talk about the parallels between then FBI Director Comey and Hillary Clinton or her emails. Here's what Ken Starr said about doubling back on that issue. There really needs to be a full airing uh, of all this. I'm not saying criminal charges need to be brought. Uh, I'm not saying lock her up. I'm saying let's get to the bottom of all this because I don't think we did. You know, and Professor, he talked about the fact that there were a lot of people who were involved on that end with Hillary Clinton and then with the investigation into President Trump who thought she was going to be the president. And many of them probably never thought 
their texts would be exposed. They would have to answer questions. Any chance you think there's a revisiting of the charges or the allegations against her? Absolutely not. No. And we should stop weaponizing the criminal justice system. If you don't like Hillary Clinton, vote, you voted against her. She lost the election. I think the idea of reopening a case now would just politicize our criminal justice system even more. I think the Mueller report does a good job of depoliticizing, at least on the collusion, conspiracy, Russian interference, but I think it did an abysmal job on the issue of obstruction of justice. We, the American public, are entitled to a yes or no decision, not some law school essay on what arguments there are on both sides of this issue. That was a serious mistake. Yeah, I, I do have, as you say, that uh, flashbacks to law school exams where you do try to cover every potential avenue, cover your bases and cover both sides, uh, multiple sides, just to make sure that you get some credit for your answer in some way. It's much different when you're a special counsel. Um, the letter also does make this reference to other ongoing legal matters. I mean, there are other things that the president, people close to him within right. his atmosphere, are going to have to uh, think about. It says, separately, I also must identify any information that could impact other ongoing matters, including those that the special Special counsel has referred to other offices. That's in Barr's letter. I mean, he definitely makes uh, reference to the fact that the president and his legal team still have a lot of things on their plate, Professor. Oh, sure. But I think the reason he said that was to explain why he might not produce everything in the report, because they might be relevant to ongoing investigations. He had to say that. And we all know that there are investigations by the Southern District. But it's important that we did learn there are no sealed indictments that there's no recommendation in the report for any further indictments. And so this is not what many people feared, just shifting it over to the Southern District and saying, we're not going to indict this guy, but maybe you should. That was done with the Attorney General as far as the uh, obstruction of justice, but he didn't do it with the Southern District. So, look, this is a good day for the president. It's a very, very bad day for CNN. I have to tell you, there should be hanging their head in shame when you think about how many people went out on a limb and predicted there would be indictments for obstruction, there would be indictments for collusion, there would be indictments for this and for that. They made it seem like it was an open and shut case, and they misinformed the American public. And they have to have some public accountability when you say things that turn out not to be true. Look, I've been vindicated. I've been saying this from day one and been criticized and uh, condemned for simply doing a legal analysis that I think any reasonable, objective, nonpartisan lawyer would have done, would have come to the same conclusion I came to, and essentially the conclusion that was come to today by the Attorney General. All right, Professor Ellen Dershowitz, always great to have your insights. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you.